good morning, intern. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And we are here among our little coastal area. Look at all the birdies. Oh my gosh, look at all the babies. Oh, isn't that just so precious? I love watching all of them interact together. Oh, oh, and we need to replenish their little mud piles. Oh, look at them. Oh, there's so many babies. Oh, I don't know what it is about birds and coastal birds, but I just, I have a soft spot. I really do. Let's go ahead and make sure all the babies are well groomed. They're still learning how to preen those feathers. Oh, there's a swimming baby. Hi, baby. They're still learning how to preen those feathers and take good care of themselves uh, when they're in and out of the seawater all the time. And look at our guests. Our guests seem super duper happy that they're up there, that they're looking down on all the fish and the birds. Though lately, a lot of our guests have been hanging out. Oh, there's some bird poop right on my foot. That's fine. But lately, a lot of our guests have been hanging out over at the dolphin exhibit. And you want to know why, in turn? It's because we have baby dolphins. Yeah, babies. And I didn't even know. That's why this crowd's over here. I had no idea. But apparently, a couple of our dolphins have actually already had babies. And here they are. Look, there's a baby right there. Dolphin babies. There's dolphin babies already. And we didn't even know it, in turn. Do you know how silly I feel? Oh my gosh, and they're just napping right there, isn't there? Aren't they just, oh, this is such a beautiful sight. That is something that is so true for our work here, is that everything is just so beautiful. Oh, and someone's trying to learn something with a trainer whose body has gone missing. Well, this is a nice twist on the, um, the disappearing head syndrome. Instead of disappearing head syndrome, we have disappearing body syndrome. I don't know if he's going to be that effective of a trainer, if the poor dolphin cannot even, like, see the hand signals that he's being given. So, hmm. That's interesting. That's very interesting indeed. But yes, so our dolphins have actually started having babies. And you know what that means in turn? That means we need more names. More amazing names to give these little guys. And let me see. Right now, I have three names for our dolphins, which you have picked out in turn. And here's our female, one of our females, and that would be Winter. And then another one of our females. She doesn't have a mate just yet, but this is Lila. And then our male, of course, you guys. Oh, uh, you intern, you intern, you. You came up with Flipper. So, of course, we would go back to the very common Flipper. And then it looks like we have three little boys. <laughs> So a little boy, um, I think who is actually, he's stalking one of the fish. That's fine. There's plenty of fish for him to be able to do that. I think we have one unattached male who just hasn't looked at our female for some reason. And then the two little twin boys. So we need more names. And of course, Flipper Jr. would be a good name. Oh, I think this little guy was actually like born to Dahlia. So Delia, so um, I'm gonna name her, him Dipper because I think Delia, the famous dolphin that visited, actually gave birth to him. So we're gonna name him Dipper. There we go. And then we'll have Flipper the second. There we go. Whose mother is Winter in here. There we go. All right, and we have 347 animals now in turn. So we're doing really good on the animal front. But we need to look for some stranded fish. I have gotten many reports from our guest that we have stranded fish, fish in our midst. There we go. And so let's check and make sure everyone's doing okay. Everyone's feeling pretty healthy within reasonable, reasonable amounts. Looks like we have a baby who needs a nap. Are you gonna, yeah, going to sleep. So he's taking care of his little needs. We have another baby who's going into the water. I'm gonna go play with some things so that he won't be so bored. We have a lot of fish of which we might start selling a few. Oh my gosh. Because we need to make a little bit more room. Yeah, the blue tangs are not going to breed for us, I think. That is all the more is the pity. Because these guys are amazing. Okay, the purple queens. Purple queens breed a little too quickly, so I'm fine with adopting a few of them out, but I don't think. Yeah, actually, no one's gonna buy our purple queens from us, so never mind. <laughs> We're already up into the late hundreds with how many purple queens we have, so those guys breed really quickly in turn. Oh, here we go. All right, now we're getting to the spotted eagle rays. So submerging, but not feeling very rested. I wonder if we have not made just the right new exhibit yet. 
going to eat fish from the artificial reef. All right, I wonder if these beautiful reefs are unfortunately blocking too much of the food. So there we go. There, you know what, intern, I was right. As cool as it is to be able to decorate the bottom quite actively, I think what the rays need more than anything is just a nice open flat area. So I'm gonna remove these coral reef things. And there we go. Now they're starting to move around more. Hopefully they're getting a little bit of sleep. Yeah, she's getting exercise because she can move around more and she's resting a little more. So the rays are a lot more sensitive of a creature to keep than I would have expected. So we'll, we'll work hard on making sure she's nice and comfy. So she should be resting right now. All right, or he, excuse me. We're looking at the male of the two right here. All right, pregnant clownfish, nothing new. All right, and then our babies. We still haven't named all of our little turtle babies, so we should probably do that. And we have another little female. So I've got a ton of names that you've given us in turn. So let me go down them. I'm going to name this little one. Let's see. Let's go with Luna. Luna. Little baby Luna. And then there's another female right here. So let's name her Tori. And then we have another little female. I love the little babies. That's still surprising that our second female only laid one egg a while ago. So Amnesia, which I thought was a very cute name. Then we've got our little male. I'm going to name him Wave. Whoops. There we go. There you go, Wave. Oh my gosh, way too many fish eggs. Way too many fish eggs. We're going to have to get uh, like a handle on that pretty soon. And then Shelly. So don't worry, we are going with some of the more traditional names that you picked out too. So there's Shelly. So all of them are doing all right. I'm not seeing any distressed fish just yet, to be honest. So, yeah, like seems like our fish are doing fine to me. However, I think, I think it is time, like, to come through, and we're just gonna go ahead. I can't even get rid of the eggs. Never mind. I was gonna say let's just go ahead and clear out some of the eggs. Can't do that. So we're just gonna have to keep our eyes peeled and be very careful about like what we have in here. Oh, and look at how everyone's feeling educated. <gasps> Yay! Having people be educated about what we do is the whole point! Yay! Alright, we need to get more Coral Cove ice cream set up. Dang it! Lifetime loss! No one wants the Coral Cove ice cream up here. Why? Why are people so picky? Well, let's try with right down here. Maybe right here is where Coral Cove ice cream needs to be, next to the whole food court. Maybe people are like, of course I don't want ice cream if I'm looking at the fish from like the terrace. I want to see like ice cream in my food court, so maybe that'll help. All right, and we don't have very long before it's going to be time to actually start getting a, a whale shark. So I think we need to get ready for like another show exhibit. So that means trying to train these guys ourselves. So which of the, should be Flipper, Lila? Who's being trained right now? Winter is being trained right now. So let's go ahead and look at her mate Flipper. And Flipper, can I train you? I think we might need to train him ourselves. He knows nothing right now. So this could be a little bit tricky. Um, hmm. Yeah, and actually having a trainer do it's really fun because then they, they managed to pull this off. Winter, what do you know? She's stalking Purple Queen 53. I wonder if they actually eat them or if they just stalk them for fun. Hmm. Hmm. We either need a show, or if we're not going to do shows, we need a way to make a lot of money. And our turtles are not breeding very quickly. And our fish don't sell because there's too many of them and everyone just laughs you out of like the place if you're like, hey, you guys wanna you guys wanna buy some purple queens? And they're like, purple queens, we've got too many of our own. People are really excited to be over here. Hmm, are they donating here? Yeah, not bad, not bad. Average donations of $61, so that's not terrible. I wonder if they need some ATMs. Maybe that's a thing people need. Have people used this? Mmm, not for a while. So let's see. Well, we could we could make ATMs happen a little bit. Let's put some ATMs down just to see if that helps. Maybe that'll get people to spend a little bit more money. Feel comfortable spending money, bringing money here. Because we need to make money in turn. Baby wall shark. How are we going to make money? 
What do you think would be- I prefer breeding the animals so that we can especially release them to other institutions and to the wild, but, huh. Well, actually, that isn't an idea. All right, let's put an ATM right there. And then let's put another one over by the food court, kind of near the gift shop, because that's where people tend to expect their ATMs to be, I'm finding. Um, right next to the gift shop? Probably the best idea, to be honest. It's not the most attractive, because it's kind of obvious, like, hey, come get your money and spend it. But it it's very important to let people actually have access to their money. It's a service. It's a service intern. All right, so... Yeah, actually, maybe if we invest in a rare creature and then we can sell um, the ones that we breed because then we'll be part of a conservation agency. I prefer that over like having them do shows and things like that. All right, let's see. So if we were going to find somebody. Oh, look at everybody. Hi. Oh, my goodness. Oh, manatees. I do love manatees. They tend to breed very well, but, um, let's see, bonnethead sharks, green sea turtles, maybe one of the rare sea turtles. We have a very good track record with breeding sea turtles, so maybe one of them. Ooh, look at that. Oh my gosh. <gasps> oh, coelacanths. What if we could make, like, world fame by being one of the first people to breed coelacanths? That would be amazing. There's marlins and sailfish, the common thresher. Now the common thresher is worth quite a bit, so we could do common thresher. The leatherback sea turtle though. You know what, I would love if we could get each and every one of the sea turtles and we can make a breeding program with them because I think that would make us pretty famous and I think it would be doing some very good work. So we might save up and we might work on getting a really nice leatherback sea turtle exhibit of some kind set up now what's going to be tricky is it's going to have to be a hybrid exhibit of both land and water so that they have somewhere to lay their eggs uh so that's going to be a little bit hard where would we build that in turn where do you think is a good spot for that in our zoo let's see not really back here and if we get the the baby whale shark Man, a hybrid exhibit of that size. I think maybe this corner over here. Maybe this corner over here. And what we can do is try to make a really big, like, make it really organic shaped. Oh, it's going to be so expensive. And to do a hybrid, man. Hmm. Maybe what we can do is we can kind of go down into the ground a little bit. We can have, like, a tank viewing area. And then the leatherback sea turtle spot. Hmm. That is going to be very tricky, actually. Giving them a hybrid exhibit, but it would be kind of nice to have, like, this is the land where they come out. And then it'll go down. And then the path can kind of go down like a tunnel system almost. And run alongside and have, like, a nice glass viewing area for where all the water will be. I think we could pull that off. Could we pull that off? It would have to be... It would have to be done carefully. Hmm. See, this is my thinking silence in turn. My thinking silence of why did I pick something so challenging? But now it, it's kind of appealing to me. So we might try that out. Alright, and why are people complaining? This zoo isn't amusing enough for me. This zoo needs some dessert carts. It's time for me to go home. There's dessert carts right here! I wonder, are people just not able to pull themselves away? Look at everybody leave! Ha! Dave went into the wrong restroom. Oh, that's adorable. Are you guys, like, all just mass leave? What? Why? Why? We have some sort of max exodus of guests in here, and this isn't good. Okay, you know what? I think we've dibble-dabbled enough. So let's go ahead, and we'll get the leafy sea dragon exhibit started, at least. And then we can think about how we're going to try to breed up some of the rare creatures in a little bit. Hmm. It's definitely an important question because we need to be able to get, like, good money. There's no question about that. We're running low on funds. We've already burned through, like, $200,000. And the zoo is not pulling in that much yet, for sure. We're an investment. Alright. And now, we do have a whole bunch of these guys. 
that we might want to adopt out. Is that going to do anything? Oh, I think that gave us like $200. Nope, that's not going to do anything. <laughs> oh dear. All right, well, let's go ahead. We're going to come over here. And we are going to build a small little tank that we're going to put the leafy sea dragons in, in turn. So I'm pretty happy about that. And that's going to turn... Ooh, ooh, what's this? Ooh, very pretty. Low acrylic tank wall, interesting. Nice. And that is going to turn um, this into a little tunnel area is what our goal is. We're going to turn it into a little tunnel zone in just a little bit. But we're going to kind of gently trap our poor little educator in here with this part. She's going to be in there. And then the rest of this is going to be where we're going to stick our leafy sea dragons. I think I might need to make a little indent right there. There we go. And there we go. There we go. And this is going to be where we have our leafy sea dragon tank in turn. So this should be fun. It's just going to be a nice little kelp coral tank. Uh, or kelp tank, I should say. A little kelp forest tank. If I can find where those adorable little leafy sea dragons have gone. Coastal. Were they coastal? They're, they're kind of... They live in like kelp, little kelp forests. So we'll try to figure out where they have disappeared to. Um, Rocky Reef? Or little Reef? Little Reef, guys! There we go! Beautiful little tiny leafy sea dragons. This actually might be way too big for them. I think this is actually way too big for them, so let's put something else in here. Here's some beautiful royal angelfish. I don't think we have any of those guys swimming around. Um, what about sea crates? Oh, they're tiny too! My goodness! This is an itty bitty exhibit. Flatback turtles, hawksbill turtles, which are also endangered. So we could really... Here's a little zebra shark. Ooh! It might be big enough for just a small little zebra shark, a little reef zebra shark. And if that bred, that would be good. See, here's our whale shark we're going to end up with, and it's going to need a much bigger area. We can have a little nurse shark, also endangered. Black tip reef shark. Not endangered, but... You know what? Yeah, maybe we'll turn this into a small little... A small little shark exhibit for a zebra shark. It's not the biggest thing in the world, but it's not that small either. It just kind of feels like it. So yeah, maybe we'll put a couple zebra sharks in here. They are vulnerable status, and I would feel good about them having some space to just kind of roam around and eat things and grow. So I think that's what we'll do. We'll decorate this out a little bit. Make it look nice and nice and attractive for them. Nice little like reef area. In fact, maybe we can sneak in some of the big rocks down here. Because little fish, see little fish show up on these rocks. So we might be able to sneak a few of those in to place without making the exhibit too tight. I don't want to make it too crowded after all. Maybe one over there. And one more rock over here. Maybe? Let's do a smaller one. Yeah, like that. And then offset it with this one. There we go. Yeah, this will be nice. We'll put a little zebra shark uh, couple in here and some random fish. And then they can just go wild and hopefully have some babies and we can adopt the babies out to other institutions. And this is the practical money frustrating side of things where you have to think about these things to make sure we can continue running our zoo. If, like, we don't charge admission to this zoo because we want it to be more educational than anything. So that's one of the reasons we don't make that much. Alright, let's go ahead and scoot the tree fern up a little bit so he's not sticking through the side of the tank. Come here, tree fern. And there we go. Alright. There we go. So yeah, just a little bit more for the zebra sharks. And I really, I, I've got it in my head now, in turn. I really want to breed more of the turtles. So we'll try releasing some of the turtle species into the big middle area tomorrow. And we'll see how that does. All right. So anybody else? Anything else I want to put in here? Hmm. Maybe some feather stars. A couple little feather stars. A nice little blue, blue coral, blue-green coral or two. We might play with this a little bit. Because it takes a while to, like, it takes eons to make a coral reef in the wild. So that, no wonder we always feel awkward when we're trying to build one over here. Especially because it just, it doesn't feel right until you, like, really fiddle with it for a long time. You know what I mean, intern? So we will fiddle with how we're laying out 
this exhibit tomorrow. Otherwise, yeah, some plate coral. There we go. Plate coral is always good. Kind of help fill in little spots and areas. There we go. Good, good, good. And a little bit. Oh, yeah, there. Some of the little spiky staghorn coral to kind of make it look a little sharper. Hopefully they won't hurt themselves. There we go. I feel much better already. All right, and maybe like a little big brain coral kind of in the corner or in the side there. All right, and a nice little cluster of these guys. That's not really entirely how, well, it just doesn't feel authentic to how like coral, you usually see like a small cluster of one type of coral, but the coral reef is a very competitive ecosystem in turn. You're not gonna see a lot of them often in some reefs and in other reefs sometimes you only see like one or two types so let's see it's a little table for all and sticky in the corner that's better you have to not overthink it i think in turn that's the key to making a pretty looking coral reef is just don't overthink it don't overthink it just dive in and sprinkle things around a little sea urchin all right that should be good all right anything else that this guy wants some entertainment. Ooh, ooh, we could have just gone with this coral reef. We might layer it over and see how that goes. In fact, what happens if I remove the rock? That's nice. And then the rock danger is gone, so I'm gonna leave that there. All right, I'm gonna set loose um, three herring for them to play with. I'm going to put in a clam bubbler for them to poke if they so desire. And then we will release our zebra sharks in and turn. Huzzle! And I think we're gonna do it. I've made up my mind. We are indeed going to work on breeding pretty much every turtle, sea turtle species we can get our hands on. All right, and we have a male and a female zebra shark who are both going to need names. Let's dash away for a moment. Let the evil splashing of evilness calm down. There we go. And now we have a lovely zebra shark exhibit. I just need to make sure we put a filter on it. You gotta remember these kinds of things in turn, you know? Just need to make sure we stick a filter on the back back here. Mm-hmm. Couple of them. And a spot for our zookeepers to be able to get in and out to feed them. So right there. And let's dive down and get a good look at them. I can't see a thing in turn. <laughs> and this this is why we need to be able to get the uh, the lights that come in the show tanks once we earn enough stars. This is 100% why we need to be able to do that. There, that's better. Now I can see. Hello, zebra sharks. Oh my goodness. Where'd the zebra sharks go? Oh, there they go. Oh, wow. Oh, intern! Good call, intern! They are an attractive, an attractive couple. Is it the right color? Is it the right water for them? Let's make sure it's the right water for them. I totally forgot to even double check that. Reef? Water? Here. Is that, is that how? Okay. Is that good? Alright, that should be good. Curse it for being so dark all the time. And our guests seem very happy, though. Oh, look at you. This is going to be so nice. All right, let's swim up a little bit and turn around. <gasps> Hello, beautiful. Swim up a little bit and turn around. Yeah, look at those guys. Hopefully, they will get well acquainted. They'll settle in. They'll feel comfortable. Oh, see, happiness. Happy zebra sharks, that's what I like to see. Happy sharks indeed. All right, and we can move these benches out of here because I want people to be able to look on both sides. I think they're gonna start turning around and they're gonna start looking at the zebra sharks. And we can start moving more of the reef fish over here as well because we have ever present reef fish. Like this purple queen who is now pregnant yet again. Oh no, why is everyone unhappy? Winter is, is chasing the purple queen. Is that, they seem happy about that though. Man, you guys. Winter's chasing purple queen. Well, we'll, we'll see how it goes. That's how it is, you guys. 
Watching Education Array is very educational. Good, good. So we're getting there. We're getting there in turn. All right, good. Well, tomorrow we will be working on possibly trying to clear up how many fish we have. I think we're at a little bit of a fish overload again. So we might go through and clear out some of our fish. Oh my goodness, there's so many. And then we will also work on um, getting in more turtles in here because I want to see more turtle species. I think that the turtles that we have in here right now are pretty content not to breed again too quickly. So we'll try adding in several other varieties and see how many different babies, baby turtles we can have flopping around looking so cute. And hopefully maybe we can work hard enough that we'll get known, become known as one of like the really great breeding institutions for turtles. I can't believe there's like over 300 fish in this pond alone. That's amazing. All right, in turn, I'll see you bright and early in the morning tomorrow. Bye-bye.